Hey guys, it is Tyler back once again with another top five moments in Assassin's Creed. I know lots of people have been really enjoying this series and I really appreciate everyone's support of it. So it's been really cool and now we've just done Assassin's Creed 3 last week and we move on to one of my favourite Assassin's Creed games, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag with, an, again, a, one of my favourite assassins, Edward Kenway. So... Without further ado, guys, we're going to get right into these top five moments in Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. At number five, it is Edward kills Ben Hornigold. Now, I do seem to have a soft spot in terms of storytelling moments for when friends end up having to fight friends for whatever reason that may be. And this one stood out to me, especially in Assassin's Creed 4, where you have Edward, who's fighting for pirates, fighting for this personal freedom or gain that he's seeking, and he's torn enough within himself, and then he has this Ben Hornigold, who he sees doing this unforgivable sin, betraying the pirates, betraying everything they all stood for, especially a man that showed him a lot of the way, that in a lot of ways, like Blackbeard, was a mentor to him. And he literally went in with the people they fought against. He went with the British and the Crown and took the pardon. And Edward's like, this guy, I, I can't believe it. And it was just a really amazing moment, that dialogue they have. Uh, one of the best dialogues after an assassination, that is. You know, Edward really gives it to him and explains the hatred that's there after everything they've been through together. It was definitely... A touching yet strange moment, but epic nonetheless in Assassin's Creed. At number four, Jamaican Prison. Now, this is a super emotional sequence of events that take place throughout this mission in this Jamaican prison. After some events take place, Edward finds himself in prison in Jamaica, in Kingston, and so does Anne Bonny and Mary Reed. But along the way, you find people like Jack Rackham and Charles Vane in prison. Jack, who's died. Charles Vane, who's kind of gone psychotic. Then you lose your close, close friend Mary, who showed you the assassins. Who, in a ways, Edward loved. And she loved him in their own strange way for the strange life they lived, certainly. And it was just a sad moment. It was... It was almost like the it's always darkest before the dawn moment where Edward has hit rock bottom. He's lost his ship. He's lost all the people that were close to him. Everyone that was there with him in NASA in the beginning. All the pirates are gone. And it's just him and Anne Bonny that survived. But he's come a long way and he's learnt a lot and he's realising a lot of his mistakes and trying to find a way to redeem it and get revenge on those who have wronged him and take out those Templars and the Assassins, give him that opportunity and safe haven to come back and redeem himself. At number three, the Observatory. Now this is a super epic scene where you and Robert the Sage come into the Observatory, you go through this whole jungle and forest and everything, and then you make your way in because obviously only a sage may enter the observatory and you hear about what it is but you don't really understand its powers and it's this epic labyrinth of rooms with these glass and blood vials in there and then you see what the observatory does with this crystal skull in the middle using those blood vials you can literally as it says observe all the people whose blood's in there and see exactly what they're doing and where they're doing it it's a way to it's, I guess it's, in Watch Dogs terms, it's CCTV, it's, it's a way to watch people and gain so much power, and Edward thought he could use it and sell it and kind of have his own gain to it, and sure, Roberts does show him the observatory, but there is a betrayal there, and it's just a cool moment, obviously, seeing the observatory, but also being like, wait, you thought you were friends with Roberts? He's like, no, nah, fuck that. You're my enemy, and then you have some problems. At number two, it's Blackbeard's death. It has to be in there. It's one of the most epic, most sad moments with the score going, and what Blackbeard meant to Edward, and the fact that they're on a Spanish galleon, or British galleon, I should say, and they've tried to hunt down Blackbeard, 
and you guys are both just fighting to the last breath and what Blackbeard says about being heroes and gold and what it's done and Blackbeard ends up falling after all that. It was just so sad to see because of how epic a character Blackbeard is. The epic battle you go through to get there and such a special person of course and what Blackbeard meant to Edward, our main protagonist. He was like a father figure that he never had. The person who mentored him alongside Hornigold, sure, but to Edward, Blackbeard never betrayed what he stood for. Blackbeard was always Blackbeard. He stayed true to the pirates. He straight stayed true to himself in that way as well. And that meant a lot to me as a player, but also to Edward. And to see him go down in that battle in that epic way was just so sad and emotional, but left a lasting memory of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. And when I think of the game, that's one of the first things I think of is that moment. And you sailing away from that battle with your men left, knowing that you've left a piece of the pirate's legacy behind you. At number one... Edward meets his daughter, Jenny Kenway, or Jennifer Scott, as she likes to be known. But this whole ending sequence, you see this letter arrive, and you're like, well, what, what does that mean? And then you kind of have this nice moment where Edward's like, look, I'm not going to join the Assassins yet, but when I've passed this phase of my life that I need this greed and bloodlust, which I'm at the latter end of, he'll be ready to properly join the Assassins and do what needs to be done. He's learnt a lot and come a long way, and you see that in the way he talks to Anne Bonnie, and Anne, of course, says her... She herself cannot join the Assassins, it's just not in it, but you have the reminiscent moment. Edward sees the ship with his daughter sailing in, and then you have Anne Bonnie sing that beautiful song, and it kind of gives you a totally different vibe to most endings to an Assassin's Creed game, something you've really never experienced before, you know, it's no cliffhanger, it's no epic high point climax and then the game ends, like a lot of the Assassin's Creed games seem to. There is a proper epilogue before the end, really. Assassin's Creed 3 kind of had one, but this is unique, this is different, this is you come full circle as a character, you see where he started and you see now where he ends through the person he now is, ready to be a father, ready to be an assassin, something he never really thought he could do, with how strong he held the pirate's life, and looking back and seeing the friends you lost on the way, but also being able to see the things you've gained, and the person you've become, with the other pirates that are alive because of you, the assassins that are there, Atawale and Bonnie, and then seeing Edward be able to go down to that ship, you know, and he cuts the flowers off, and it's all nice, and at first you think it's just going to be his wife that finally shows up that he's talked about, but you realise that she, in fact, passed away, and it's a daughter you've never met and never knew about, that you finally meet Jenny Kenway, or Jennifer Scott, as she likes to be called, and it's just an unreal moment to see that full circle of a character, and him come all this way. It was really special, and even at the end, to also see a special post-credits or kind of in-credit scene of a moment that we talked about or we were told in Assassin's Creed 3 Haytham when he went to the theatre said he was here once with his father and we see that moment his sister obviously Jenny when she's a lot older a much older and nobleman Edward a strange sight to see that's for sure but also seeing a very young Haytham Kenway cool cool moment that you just don't see in Assassin's Creed games where you see kind of what life was like after as well and it really properly linked us to the story of Assassin's Creed 3 and the characters we know there. So what a great moment the ending of Assassin's Creed 4 was. And Assassin's Creed 4 is full of a whole lot of great moments. It's a really sad tone of a game. But a wonderful game at that. A game I love. So guys, thank you for watching these top 5 moments in Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. I love the discussion. I want to hear your thoughts course be sure to like this video and subscribe if you're new and i'll see you guys later